Okay, hi there. Uh, lots of students are covering market failure in their revision for economics papers at the moment. So I want to make a, a distinction in this video between production and consumption externalities. This is a key distinction to make. Many students uh, make errors on this in their papers. We'll focus in this video just on negative externalities. So first of all, negative production externalities. They come from the supply side of the market. And they happen when producers' behaviour leads to um, third-party spillover costs. So a producer imposes an extra cost on somebody else who lies outside the immediate transaction. The result is that the social cost of production is greater than the private cost. Of course, examples include things like pollution and dumping of waste, the use of antibiotics in livestock production. We're going to be looking at the diagram in a second. And in particular, to get a top grade, you'll need to show the welfare loss triangle, which is essentially the, the sum of the, the, the social costs exceeding the social benefits of production. <clears throat> but here are some good examples of negative production externalities, pollution, industrial emissions and waste contamination effects, including from farming, uh, the impact of deforestation on communities, and sustainability and noise pollution, for example, from the airline sector. All good examples of external spillover costs. <clears throat> now the diagram. Make sure your diagrams are nice and big, half a page at least for each diagram. Here's a negative production externality analysis diagram. First thing to note is that the marginal social cost, MSC, lies above the private cost for the producer. And I've drawn my MSC curve is pivoting away a little bit, slightly different gradient from MPC. That suggests that the marginal external cost, the externality, is getting bigger at higher output levels. Maybe the, the depth of the pollution costs are getting bigger. So there's our social cost lying above private cost. I'm assuming here there are no externalities from consumption. Therefore, marginal private benefit and marginal social benefit are the same. The private optimum, the free market optimum output is Q1, where private cost and private benefit intersect. But at Q1, there is an external cost shown by the vertical distance. The vertical distance, if we go to this point here, this is the vertical distance, and that's the external cost. <clears throat> now, the social optimum is where social cost interacts with social benefit. So the social optimum is output Q2. That's where we'd need to be. That's where we'd want to be. But at that output, which is less than the private optimum, um, there is a market failure. And the way to show this is by using a welfare loss diagram. So if we go to Q2, that's the output we'd like to be at, Q2. Uh, beyond Q2, if we increase production, the marginal social cost lies above the marginal benefit. So cost greater than benefit, hence there's a welfare loss area. The reason why is because the market output Q1 is higher than the social optimum output Q2. So that leads to a welfare loss. Clearly, the bigger the externalities, the wider will be the gap between social cost and private cost. So it's up to you how, how much you draw your externality. If you want to show a big externality, Make sure that the marginal social cost is significantly above the marginal private cost. Negative consumption externalities refer to demand choices made by consumers. So it's when consumers' behaviour leads to third-party costs imposed on other people. Classic examples, excessive drinking and smoking, um, affecting third parties that lie outside the transaction. And again, we'll be looking for a welfare loss. So here are some examples of consumption externalities, particulates from vehicle pollution, the impact of gambling and uh, other forms of addiction on, on the wider families and communities, household waste, air pollution from smokers, including third party effects from passive smoking, the, the cost to society of treating obesity and diabetes related illnesses, the costs of litter. So lots of things that we do create negative externalities. Now, Depends which exam board you're using, but this is the standard negative consumption externality, particularly for AQA students. Notice here 
that with a negative externality, my consumption, for example, is reducing, cutting the benefit to a third party. So here's the private benefit to the consumer, MPB, but there's a negative externality, meaning that the social benefit lies below. And at the private optimum, which is at point C, up at Q2, there's a negative consumption externality shown by the vertical distance CB. <clears throat> From society's point of view, we prefer to be at A, where social costs and social benefit meet. That's output Q1. Again, meaning that there's a welfare loss. So if we're at Q1, any output above it, the social cost lies above the social benefit. Therefore, there's a welfare loss. And I won't shade that for you. The deadweight loss of welfare is A, B, C. And again, the bigger the externality, the greater is the potential welfare loss. As with all of these things, <clears throat> there are two issues. One is identifying what the externalities are, who's affected and by how much. And the second issue for evaluation in particular is how to put a price, how to put a value on the externalities created. Some of these things, it's hard to put a monetary value on the externality. But the crucial thing is for the exam, for the market failure paper, can you make a distinction between production and consumption externalities? You need to be able to do that. And of course, that then allows you to draw two different analysis diagrams. OK, thank you.